Hello, welcome to the Lately in PHP podcast. This is episode uh, number 31. And finally, we, we have back uh, Ernani Chopper. <laughs> Hello, came Manuel. out of the desert. <laughs> yes. Ernani, where have you been? Have you been in the desert? <laughs> no, not in the desert. I, I wish I would be. I'm just struggling with my uh, move out of address, and uh, I've been here and there. Crazy okay. stuff. Well, today we we have um, uh, a busy show, lots of uh, things to talk about. We're going to start right away. Um, Happy New Year for everyone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, we, you are recording uh, a bit late. Usually, you record by the end of the year, uh, so <laughs> you're right uh, to wish Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, and um, as I was saying, I'm going to start right away with the latest uh, topics, the things interesting that are happening in the PHP world. Uh, let's start by the latest release of um, uh, PHP 5.4.10 and PHP 5.3.20. Well, basically, this is a release just made of uh, of uh, bug fixes. There is not uh, much to say about this. Uh, so, just if you if you are using these versions, uh, just uh, take a look at the change log. Uh, page, they tell you exactly what were the bugs that were fixed and um, you can um, uh, check it out uh, if it was anything important to your uh, uh, your applications, anything that affects uh, your the way your applications work. So, um, this is one uh, uh, kind of regular release that uh, is happening practically once a month. And, but now we are getting closer to uh, 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 release of uh, the PHP 5.5.0, and uh, uh, this time uh, there was uh, a release of a second alpha version, and um, uh, basically uh, uh, one of the things that was already introduced in this uh, alpha version was the uh, the extension of uh, MySQL that was uh, from now on deprecated, and um, and this is uh, an interesting topic that we th I think we should comment uh, um, a bit in detail because um, uh, as you may see uh, here in this page, we there there was there was a, a vote. Um, that uh, was, took place on uh, December 10, and uh, uh, it was not exactly a consensual decision. Uh, were, I think it was like uh, two thirds of the people that um, voted uh, uh, for uh, the approval of this deprecation. This is a topic that um, uh, we already discussed this in uh, like. Uh, in 2011, uh, about the plans it, uh, to eventually deprecate uh, MySQL sequence, the, the original MySQL sequence that has been with PHP since, well, practically the beginning since it was uh, introduced. I th I'm not sure if it was in PHP 1 or PHP 2. Well, uh, uh, anyway, uh, it was one of the first. Um, extensions to access SQL databases to be introduced in PHP and uh, many many applications use this extension to access that databases so I think it's this decision to deprecate now in PHP 5.5 will have a great impact uh, and any what do you think about this decision uh, uh, would you vote in favor or against it if you were to vote for this uh, proposal I understand that uh, PHP has to proceed with the future implementations, etc. But I am against uh, removing compatibility to the backward versions, just because there are a lot of uh, products, even on the open source world, that provides uh, facilities to the user. 
and uh, having them th those teams which are open source teams so people dedicated to to uh, work on those uh, solutions they won't have the enough time to deliver fun new functionalities just because they will have to adjust their code to the uh, earlier versions the newer versions of PHP so in my opinion uh, I think you can deprecate uh, and mostly throw warnings just to make sure that uh, the developer is aware but uh, I, I don't like uh, the idea of having people removing functionalities. Uh, I know it's hard and tough to maintain and sometimes there are bugs that uh, affect uh, other versions etc but uh, I believe that the PHP group should uh, motivate other developers throughout the world to make sure that they maintain those versions and I believe that there is a lot of uh, C developers that are willing to contribute and I think that uh, the more contributors yeah. uh, available the better yes, but I don't, uh, think, I don't think that's the key thing of PHP since it has been a closed uh, group uh, and very hard to to assist in my opinion and uh, yeah, I, I believe that uh, this is a very political decision, and uh, I'd vote against it. That's yes, my the, the the reasoning behind uh, this uh, deprecation is to encourage people to use the MySQL I extension, with, which is very similar, but uh, just as a change in function names, and uh, also it introduces the support to to prepared statements. That, that somehow help uh, people to avoid uh, security attacks and this is the, the main uh, motivation uh, to, towards pushing uh, people to use uh, this uh, the MySQL I extension yeah. instead or, or eventually the PDO MySQL driver but uh, well I, I, it is not clear for me if uh, in the later uh, in the in a future version it will actually um, be removed comp completely from PHP for now it's just uh, just a, a few a few uh, notices uh, warnings that will appear uh, for the deprecation yeah and uh, then I I see on the release on the documentation they already went there and yeah. updated it. So uh, right, it seems they are very eager to yeah to announce this deprecation. And they state very clearly here that this extension is deprecated on as, as of PHP 5.5.0 and will be removed in the future. So that kind of uh, states very clearly that they will be removing it. Right. Let me so. show it here. Uh, well, it's very clear, as you said, and uh, they encourage uh, people to use other versions. So uh, I think uh, it, uh, on one side it has a constructive uh, purpose, which is to educate to people to use uh, 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 a different extension that pushes the use of um, prepared the statements. And uh, eventually, we'll make people uh, write code that is more secure. But that does not mean that people that use the old MySQL extension would not be secure. It's just yeah. uh, an assumption that uh, th uh, things will be uh, different. Well, f uh, for now, it, this will just be an, an annoyance to see any deprecation statements on newer versions. And uh, I'm afraid this probably with. Uh, uh, may not work as they intend uh, to will discourage people to upgrade to new versions that issued all these warnings as right. happened uh, with PHP 5.0 it was rejected for a long time people avoided it because they did not want these warnings but uh, let's wait and see uh, what uh, uh, what um, we can uh, well, how the, the community the PHP community will react and um, exactly. but, uh, now uh, actually moving on to a, another topic 
and I was trying to also share the screen here, uh, which uh, it's a topic that's pretty much uh, related with, um, with all this push to uh, newer versions. Uh, right. There, there is a proposal of this case by Pierre Joal uh, uh, of the PHP Core. He, this proposal is is not exactly new, but uh, now with PHP PHP 5.5 in the uh, streamline and the, uh, and the alpha versions, it's getting closer to be released. The intention is to release it no later than June. Uh, they are planning to determine the end of line of support of PHP 5.3 already. Uh, they want to push people to to use newer versions and uh, and uh, it seems they are very eager to do so. They are trying to put a lot of pressure uh, because PHP 5.5 it's not a very old release. It's still being maintained. And lots of people are using it. And um, when you mean five point three, right? Right. When we define the 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 end of uh, five point three, um, uh, you practically you'll be pushing people to to move on to a a, a newer version. Right. Uh, or, on which they 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 will have to deal with backwards incompatible changes, and there are several of them in PHP 5.4. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and this is a, a very a very problematic uh, topic. Uh, Ernani, what do you think? Do you th do do you feel would you feel comfortable to be pushed to use newer versions, or you are fine with it and you don't mind to be upgrading regularly? I mean, um, PHP is a community, and uh, since it is a community, we have to go with the flow of the community. But I'd prefer to make something work uh, as it is. Uh, because the idea here is to, to focus on the achievement of the solution. And if it works, and it possibly probably have bugs, but uh, those can be addressed as, uh, as the, the bugs are identified. But uh, the idea here is to make things work. And if it works on older releases, why would we have to lose time or uh, put focus on new functionalities instead of uh, having to address changes. Okay, they aren't uh, uh, very big changes. So it's kind of, uh, if your code is well structured already, you can make changes very clearly and very easily. But the idea is it's a waste. It's, a, it's sometimes a waste of time. And uh, on companies looking for profit or communities having uh, developers, open source developers, uh, taking their time, dedicating their time to, to work on these uh, solutions, these uh, products. Of course, that there will be uh, a time that will be uh, taken into consideration to, to make this effort change to, to at least be compatible with newer versions. Right, and uh, as you said, uh, there is a cost associated to all these um, updates that you need to do on code bases. And if we have, if you have products that uh, have large code bases, that cost may be become uh, very significant, and uh, yeah. and uh, it may not be the right moment to. Uh, to it's upgrade, so that's the the what I see people doing. If they figure that they need to invest a lot, and the cost of the upgrades will be very high, what yeah. uh, may happen is that they avoid upgrading PHP altogether. Well, yeah. that I mean, when they control the version that can they can use, and um, well, we have to see how the community will react to all these. Uh, pushes to towards uh, newer versions uh, for instance uh, 
one large community that I'm curious to see what they will do is the WordPress one, probably the large community of a PHP application. Um, right. Because there are blogs based on WordPress everywhere, and if uh, we, we have to wait and see. But uh, also talk about new features. Uh, moving on to uh, the next topic, I'm going to. Uh, okay, let me screen share here. Uh, there are there are several proposals that are sort of uh, together uh, tied with um, with each other. Starting with uh, this one, we already commented uh, on the previous episodes, but this is a proposal that has been improved to address several concerns about the. the the implementing property accessors uh, done with a different syntax, which basically allows you to define uh, functions for getters, setters, um, as well as set and unset functions. If you need to ex uh, actually have uh, those um, uh, functionalities wrapped uh, on uh, functions. And uh, there, there are, there are, um, there are, there. This was something that has been discussed for quite a long time, and uh, yeah, the, the, the original proposal already evolved a lot. But um, uh, uh, there has been uh, a newer proposal that uh, is different. Uh, this is a different concern, which is the type hinting of class variables. And uh, uh, this prompted the, the, the creation of a, a new proposal that combines both proposals of having a, a new uh, syntax for property accessors with uh, type hinting. So there, there is this uh, proposal here by Nikita Popov um, that uh, combines the the, the, the proposals uh, to consider both things as you may see here we have this for instance in this case date time uh, class uh, uh, declaration for this date variable and then you, you have the getters and setters for this uh, variable and so this proposal combines the two uh, from what I could gather uh, uh, this uh, will be what is at least closer to a final implementation. Uh, it is interesting that you can define uh, automatically to have generated getters and setters for these functions without uh, having to explicitly write the code for it. I think this is a, a positive thing because it would be tedious, but still you uh, in the default case when you have public variables with uh, the getters and setters that do exactly what is the default, which is the same as accessing the variable directly, uh, you still have to explicitly uh, state that you want getters and setters. Uh, uh, Hernan, you've been working a lot uh, with uh, in the Java world. In the Java world, it's a common practice to go through the bureaucracy of defining getters and setters. And do you see this a uh, positive, um, um, I would say, feature, a, a measure? Do you think it will uh, reduce the, the boilerplate uh, enough? To justify this new feature at is it is the finer what is your take on this yeah uh, of course that uh, implementing getters and setters uh, allows you to to provide uh, better code uh, and uh, benefit from reflection and uh, situations like that but uh, as well it's a new functionality and it's kind of a standard uh, object-oriented uh, approach. So it's nice to see that PHP is catching up on that area as well, uh, because it, this en enriches the language. Um, another thing is, uh, I see uh, that uh, having having figures can help you and can bring problems. The, the, the only thing is uh, 
the only thing here uh, that I foresee is some developers are not used with this uh, kind of situations and they will have to learn. But uh, learning is, is always good. Knowledge is something that nobody can take out of you once you yeah, have it. It may, it may take you time as well. Yeah, that's the key thing. Time is also currency uh, some, sometimes. And, uh, but it's nice to see this going through. I don't uh, have anything against it. I like to see what I see. But uh, uh, as well, uh, I'd like to see the future of the language as a backward compatibility situation. Yeah. And I hope that uh, they don't break other things just because of those benefits. Right. Well, in this case, it will. What they are heading is not backwards incompatible. Uh, what will be incompatible is the new code that you uh, you will use um, uh, uh, this syntax. Uh, and uh, um, uh, but that's up to the, the developers to use it or not. So it's not a, a big problem. Well, anyway, moving on with the podcast, uh, now I'd like to comment uh, also uh, briefly about uh, um, a discussion that went on uh, on the PHP internals list. It is interesting that uh, um, uh, a developer named Lars Torazny um, Questioned the PHP core about uh, if they would be willing to participate uh, on the PHP FIG, FIG is a framework interoperability group, which is basically a group that was formed to define common standards for uh, PHP code. And uh, the, this group has been defi uh, the, uh, defining several specifications, PSR 0 mainly for namespaces uh, using your code. PSR and this is something, one. just uh, to, to make an observation here, Emmanuel, this is something which I've been uh, saying at the beginning of uh, when we started doing uh, PHP uh, classes uh, podcasts, yeah. that we should have a such group which tries to document uh, proposal requests as well as uh, standards and stuff and it's nice to see that this is going through well but this in, in practice is not exactly what you requested you probably wanted something more like whatever is in the java world which yeah. are which are groups that define specifications for uh, for uh, apis and things like that and for now what this group has been defining is just uh, coding styles you should yeah. format this code this the, the code this way and there uh, tabs versus spaces brackets where they should appear uh, where should you put your function arguments and things like that um, uh, we do not see yet the level of specification that you see in the in the Java world uh, yeah there is always a beginning right uh, right but they nice are to see. It's, it's nice they're to not see that at least they're already there in for four years. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they are they are trying to to improve it and they are trying to grow it. That it's always there is always an right. effort but, there. Uh, but uh, the, the idea the is to see to see uh, companies, uh, good companies like Oracle, like uh, the proper Zend company and other companies uh, like right. IBM, other companies, software right. providers having members uh, of their their interests and their products right. that are on top of this proposing other things such as design uh, applications uh, API applications yes and that, that would be great but that's not what is happening they've been years discussing uh, the way you format your code which for yeah, but me, uh, it's a major waste of time because there now there will never be a consensus because it's too late to define these things and right. they're already here defining these 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 coding styles and uh, yeah, from where I can see it there are no companies in there there are only a few uh, developers of uh, uh, frameworks because th this is mainly focus on frameworks uh, having frameworks define uh, the same coding styles so in the hope that they could interrupt uh, better but uh, right. 
that's all uh, they have done for now. And the, the problem here is that uh, they have been here for three years and uh, uh, they, are, they are not moving on to the level of the standards that are defined right. in the Java world, which are, for instance, if you want to have a, a, a specification for uh, an API for sending email, which is something that PHP needs a lot, uh, the basis, basic uh, functions of PHP for sending email are very basic. And uh, you need a lot of uh, components to format emails. I mean, not uh, the, the visually. I mean, composing the different parts of the email. And there sh should probably be a, a specification to yeah, define exactly. a common API. And, th and then you would have different frameworks to implement the very same API. And this yeah. is what does not happen in the uh, with frameworks. If each framework we will implement their own uh, API for sending email, their own API for accessing databases, their own API for things. So that is probably what should happen and happens in the Java world that is not happening in, uh, uh, at least until now. They are spend, wasting a lot of time in, uh, in internal discussions about the, the, the way they should format code. And um, the reason why I brought uh, this here is uh, is not because of that point, it's because somebody went in the PHP uh, internals list and asked uh, somebody of the PHP core to go there uh, and also participate. And uh, the basic uh, response they had from the, the several PHP core members is that it's not uh, that they should be defining how their, how their code is, should be formatted. Because what the PHP fig group is defining uh, uh, does not represent what uh, every, uh, at least the majority of the PHP developers want. Right. And that's something that is probably impossible because it's, it, this came very late. And you are not going to change the, the, the formatting uh, style of the code of people that have been programming PHP for a decade. And th that is the problem. And so basically, uh, uh, there will be no liaison uh, of the PHP core with the PHP fig because uh, one thing they, 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 they comment is that they do not want to seem as if the PHP core is endorsing this specific uh, coding starter. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, if you are going to, to think about popularity, you probably should give uh, preference to WordPress coding standards because WordPress is much more widely disseminated than any of the PHP frameworks that are being supported by people in the PHP fee. Exactly. And, uh, and they have this coding standard for years. And this coding standard is basically just for people to contribute to, to WordPress. And then, as you may see, it's uh, just a bunch of conventions that uh, uh, are also not consensual, but are probably being used by the, the majority of the PHP developers uh, uh, that use uh, WordPress, if you want to define plugins and, and submit them to the plugin repository of WordPress, and uh, that is the goal of that. And uh, well, this is basically to repeat something that we already commented before, which is uh, right. uh, that we are spending a lot of time defining coding standards that probably are irrelevant because if you format your code differently, it will still work. It will not prevent interoperability. And uh, even, uh, for instance, uh, naming styles of functions. In PHP there, it's irrelevant because PHP, the, the function uh, case, the function name case is insensitive. This means if you use a camel case or steadily caps, it doesn't matter. The, you, right. uh, you, you, you can have a different uh, name uh, uh, formatting in the code that calls a framework that is different from the, the naming format th that of the, 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 the framework. And uh, so, uh, well, this is my just my opinion. And I'm sure it's uh, my opinion, just mine. And many people will not necessarily agree with that. But uh, well, uh, just to summarize, that's basically it. But uh, uh, other than that, I also like 
to know from you, Nani. I think you already mentioned something in the past about this, but uh, probably to just for our listeners to listen to a different opinion or or not. What is your point of view? Um, yep. Is it really worth to uh, invest all these four years they are there uh, to define coding standards for all the code is formatted? Uh, shouldn't we be moving on to actual coding stands for specifications? What do yeah. you think? What do you... Uh, first of all, I, I love to see people working towards uh, the benefit of the community. That's um, the main thing. And I respect their effort, truly. The only, the only thing I, I, I see here is there is a lot of people wasting their time on specific details. Details like uh, syntax. Okay, they are required to, to have a standard or a convention. Conventions are always good because then everybody can have their code more maintainable. That's all, and also one one uh, point. The only the only thing I'd see uh, as a, a true effort, not trying to minimize their effort already done, but to see companies uh, getting involved into this. And uh, we, are, we here in uh, PHP classes, we don't just criticize others. The idea here is to see uh, watchers from this podcast and try to give them the ability to do better things as well. And I'd see as a better thing, as an improvement, uh, to try to also focus on standards like, as you said, uh, an email API standard for uh, sending emails. We can see the complexity that uh, sending email brings just by looking at the classes that you already provided right. and lots of people use this. And uh, although some other people criticize PHP classes, PHP classes has provided a lot of uh, uh, improvements on the PHP functionality and uh, a lot of uh, users uses your, your uh, forms classes and your uh, email sending classes and your uh, SSL API. There are like thousands of uh, contributors and uh, right. But since you, you classes, were it's, it's by far, it's not just me. Yeah, no, no, yeah. But since you were one of the first, those classes were one of the first ones, like the MIME email right. classes, etc. They began to be used by uh, users uh, from a long time. So the idea here is just to try to. Uh, approach people, regular developers, to what is an RFC standard and how to adapt your, your PHP language right. to an RFC standard and try to bring um, the RFC standards to what uh, PHP is and how to do it in PHP and why doing it is a benefit. And uh, right. that's the, the key point and try to, to uh, provide a, a big group of people and companies willing to vote to improve the whole ecosystem, not only just small steps like uh, conventions and, and things like that, right. but more, more broad perspective of PHP. Well, what already happens is that at least for core functionality there are RFCs, but the core functionality does not allow uh, different implementations. And this is, uh, I think, it's one of the greatest things in the Java community is that, for instance, you can define an API for uh, 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 application servers, uh, e and you have different companies different providers to implement uh, the 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 same a a APIs uh, uh, so uh, the the market can choose the provider yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and, exactly. and you can switch from one provider to the other well in exactly. theory there may be some minor issues but the in, the, uh, the original idea that, that that's that's that and that for me at least that's what i like to see i don't know what is your opinion yeah. on that is that something that you like to see Let's take, for instance, uh, SQL language. There is the NC language. There is a, a standard. So throughout that standard, other vendors, like database vendors, Oracle, MySQL, uh, Microsoft, and other providers can do their own implementation of the standard. And uh, having a good standard and uh, well-defined de uh, uh, code convention and etc. 
would bring other products for PHP world. And we would like to see products coming through as well. So one, one aspect of this is uh, if you see, as you already stated, uh, the application server world, uh, Red Hat has acquired JBoss, which was an independent group. And that brings uh, uh, some, time, some kind of uh, benefits to the, to the brand, the Red Hat brand. But throughout the JBoss, you see application servers, you see rules engine, you see every other uh, things that uh, is tied to the NIT application server. And now JBoss ecosystem has a whole set of ecosystem that, that uh, can be used as a single product to uh, deliver those uh, tools to the world. And uh, I, what I'd like to see on PHP is not just particular frameworks, particular uh, 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 HTTP servers, particular database vendors, and try to combine them all together, yeah. but to see uh, companies and open source groups also focusing on, on a more professional and scalable uh, architecture as well. That's, that's one of the things that I'd like to see on the PHP. Yeah, well, uh, this is a topic that will give a lot to more to discuss, but we do not have uh, the time. I need to move on, and this time uh, I'm going to uh, talk a bit uh, first about uh, an article that uh, I wrote based on an initiative that uh, happens every year in the PHP Classes site, although you can uh, generalize and relate it to the, the, the PHP community, which is uh, what I call the PHP Zeitgeist. Uh, basically, this is very similar to the Google Zeitgeist that... Um, it's uh, sort of on a retroactive uh, yeah. situation about the last year of PHP, right? It's a retrospective of the year and uh, um, uh, based on uh, the searches that were found to be popular uh, d during that uh, this year so in the I wrote uh, this article basically to analyze uh, what was what were the results first it explains what is the PHP zeitgeist and um, uh, uh, there is a page for the PHP zeitgeist it's not this article it's this page here on which we can see let me see if I can uh, improve increase the font of the of the list basically it shows a ranking of uh, the top training searches in 2011 you can also see the training searches and on the previous years but uh, uh, this time it was the 2011 the 2012 that was published um, uh, you see lots of keywords here and these keywords were the keywords that gained uh, uh, a certain significance dur during the, the this year. Um, uh, the way this works, uh, uh, very briefly, is that uh, every year I pick the top 3,000 uh, searched keywords, and then I look on previous years and see which keywords have ra raised to the top 3,000 that were Wait. not featured in the previous year. When we can see that migration is one of them, as we were talking uh, on the beginning of this podcast, yeah. migration is one of the the hundred. Uh, if you would see the position ninety nine or ninety eight. Oh yeah, well go and figure what that means, <laughs> because um, uh, maybe maybe. I don't know what uh, people were thinking about when they searched this the PHP classes site for migration. Maybe they were l looking for articles, not exactly yeah. packages. Articles on the or blog. Or tutorials. Maybe. Well, uh, I don't know. This we would have to ask the people. And uh, if it features here in the top three thousand, it's because uh, it's not. It was not a small number of uh, searches. Uh, anyway, what the, the the article shows, it's a uh, uh, this is subjective, but uh, uh, at least is some analysis of what were the top trending uh, uh, groups of uh, searches that users have been doing, and I basically I considered uh, like four groups 
one of new web applications that uh, have been become well that became re relevant in 2011 like uh, Instagram, Google Drive, Tumblr, Pinterest, Google Plus, SkyDrive although SkyDrive is older, OpenStreetMap, Google Maps well uh, these are not necessarily new applications they're just applications that become became more relevant this year another group is the um, uh, API, API access and uh, um, authentication with uh, using social network accounts many sites are looking to be able to act to provide those uh, login with Facebook uh, buttons or login with um, with uh, Twitter buttons and uh, there's some uh, keywords here that uh, demonstrate that another group that I saw it uh, well superficially uh, because I only found a few groups that may demonstrate that is some concern with mobile applications right uh, like uh, with searches like for mobile detection jQuery mobile and sending SMS's uh, from web services and uh, also the WhatsApp which is an application very popular on mobile devices and um, uh, what I see here is that um, more and more developers are concerned on developing uh, web applications that will also work on mobile devices being either on mobile browsers or native uh, applications that need to access uh, certain APIs yeah so they need and, uh, to somehow access them uh, from those applications and uh, one of the key changes i believe in 2011 and 12 i i'd see i'd say is the the growth of the need of having an api a public api or a private api because from the api you can grow your your uh product either from mobile perspective as a native application or a mobile application but as well as a, a, a web application or a closed application and um, the need of a public API is very very increasing and it's nice to see from other developers I'd like to see from other developers such as I've seen Frappy which is an engine from PHP world and it would be nice to invite them here to uh, uh, explain us uh, what Frappy does and why it's been implemented that way because Frappy I've been using it and uh, I, I like what I see I just uh, feel that it requires more documentation and uh, more more broad adoption mm -hmm. but uh, I'd see that uh, I'd say that uh, it's it's uh, something that we don't see very often it's an engine that generates public APIs and private APIs and uh, also PHP developers will require in the future to adjust their, their systems to provide uh, such facilities. Right. And I, uh, have you ever thought, uh, and that's a question that brings to me here and, uh, and uh, to you, the owner of PHP classes site, in that sense of uh, question, uh, have you ever planned to adopt a public API or uh, have you been uh, trying to uh, move forward in that scenario? On your website to, to focus on mobile you mean, applications. You mean to pro provide an API or 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 to access other APIs? No, no. I mean to provide more social uh, interaction with your your website. Uh, well, as actually, a sense of well, provider. So this is this this is already happened this year, uh, um, <clears throat> and this is something that was also mentioned in this article. Uh, well. Um, uh, I, I'm going to talk a bit ab about that ahead, but uh, just to finish uh, with the fourth group here, which is e-commerce and payments. Okay. And uh, we can see lots of uh, lots of searches for things that are related with um, e-commerce e sites and payment systems. Uh, I think it is even funny that uh, some of these searches are specific for Brazil. All oh, despite that Brazil is only represents five percent of the users of PHP classes site I can see very uh, several searches that uh, 
uh, are certainly specific uh, of this country. Well, anyway, but uh, now that you mentioned about uh, APIs and things that you uh, uh, that were related, one thing that I wanted to comment on the, uh, this article too, because I usually I have an article on which I talk about what has been done in the site in 2012, but then um, uh, when I found time to do it, it was already Christmas, I did not have the time to do it before, so I decided to merge uh, that topic in there in this article and just briefly comment what, what were some of the the, the the improvements done on the PHP Classic site on, on this year. There are some improvements on the friends of the site ranking, and uh, for those that want to know more about this, they can read the article and the, the, it has some links to the relevant sections. Uh, another thing that is related with APIs is to somehow make the the registration login of the site less painful, and this is required to use the the what I called before the social login. Uh, uh, support, which basically uses uh, OAuth and, and other APIs to to uh, allow users to authenticate using their Facebook account or Twitter or or Google Gmail account or Hotmail, any account of Microsoft, Yahoo, and uh, Stack Overflow, which uh, is a source of lot of uh, many visitors, as well GitHub. Now you can use your GitHub account and uh, log in in the PHP Classes site. Um, actually, uh, you can also use it to register in the site. Uh, 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 the site will use your email that you used in uh, the other site, uh, the social login site. Uh, so you don't have to go through the pain of verifying your 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 account again. So the, the registration and login of the, the site are much less painful because you don't no longer have to remember uh, your uh, username and password. As long as you are logged in your social network, it could be Facebook or uh, Google Plus or. You, you do not even need to have an account of Google Plus. So this was one use of APIs now that you are asking. Another use of APIs that was done in this uh, year is that now you can link your um, uh, social network accounts with your PHP Classes account. And uh, every time you, for instance, you publish something uh, on PHP Classes site, uh, the automatically the site can post your your timeline, so you don't go through the tedious process of announcing it yourself in your social network accounts. And this is great because it also helps the site to bring more users to your components, your classes. In case you are a publisher of uh, components, if you are not a a, a publisher of classes. Uh, you can uh, also benefit uh, participate in this linking of uh, social network accounts to spread about uh, uh, important uh, things like uh, announcements of the classes that were uh, that won the innovation award and other other interesting things like uh, blog publication of, of uh, blogs in the main blog of the site. Uh, and so on. So this was one of views uh, of APIs, but uh, I'm not sure if this is one thing that you are asking or were more uh, uh, yes. guided towards the, the 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 site providing an API for some purpose. I've been I've been following those uh, those uh, changes, and those are amazing amazing contributions that you did for for the PHP classes world. And uh, it's almost impressive uh, to be able to do so on your own. And I admire you for your effort on doing this. But the idea here is a future basis to see uh, other providers like uh, perhaps another PHP portal to interact with your portal or provide uh, uh, RSS feeds as you do already. but in a more elegant way throughout an API or throughout a, a sort of a mobile application. Do you have any any particular uh, things well, in mind to, to do well, in that area? It, it certainly depends on, uh, on 
uh, what may be the uses for that, but uh, one thing that uh, I have in mind is uh, whenever I have time, I would like to play with uh, phone gap or titanium to right. provide uh, a mobile, a native mobile application for very specific things. Uh, for uh, users to access their accounts and check information very quickly and that right. uh, would have to require the use of uh, some APIs uh, so that's where I see the use of some APIs and now uh, with the, now with the mission things and the the, the sort of uh, authors progresses yeah. there could yeah. be also games tied to the PHP classes world right well uh, well I don't know because well, we can I mean, always he, imagine things am, like that, but somebody would have to develop them, and th yeah. that takes time. Right. And, uh, but uh, uh, would you see? Would you see? Let's imagine. The, let's try to picture this uh, this scenario. Imagine I am a developer. I like to develop games, and I have an idea that would require, from your perspective, from uh, your uh, being the owner of the site, to provide me some access. To some data from your website, and then I right. require an OAuth key and etc. to interact with your your API. Right, that uh, that will eventually happen because uh, uh, it will be necessary at least for those mobile uh, applications. Now, having a general API for people to develop uh, uh, generic applications, like for instance, you have in Facebook. Uh, that is interesting. It is a matter of having a, a use case. So, if there is a developer that would, would like to implement some application that would benefit from some OAuth integration to access uh, uh, users' accounts on their behalf with their permission, of course, uh, uh, that can be done and. Uh, uh, I think it's a matter of time until I, I will do that. Now, uh, uh, between uh, making it possible and the seeing that happening, uh, it's something that uh, requires effort. Goes along because somebody would have to have the motivation to do it. But uh, well, yeah. we have to wait and see. But uh, uh, definitely, I will have some some support to access a, a API with and, uh, our OAuth keys. And designing a good API, it's a science that it's not very known so far. Yeah, I've seen some videos here and there how to to exactly uh, and uh, in a more elegant way to have a great API, a public API that you can deliver to developers. And it's nice to see that uh, the the PHP world put some focus on this because uh, Frappy guys, those uh, guys from uh, the Frappy engine have been doing a great work on this and it's very nice because it can provide also documentation yeah. for free right uh, well what from what I uh, understood I did not see that uh, very specifically but uh, from what I understood if we are going to use them for some purpose you probably would better implement it all all by yourself in, in your site because uh, that uh, it's just uh, 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 that is just uh, something that uh, probably will not do the bulk of the work. Well, uh, at least that was the impression that I got. Well, uh, anyway, there there will be a lot, a lot uh, more to say about this. And um, uh, the, the the last thing that I uh, we ma I mentioned in that article was precisely about something that you already commented: the system missions and levels that. Uh, we have. Mm, uh, I, uh, it was implemented right uh, in the end of the year, and uh, uh, it was very interesting. And uh, anybody that has interest to know more about this can look back. In the there is a video and there is an article uh, explaining that. Uh, we don't have much more time in this podcast. We are re practically reaching the end. And um, uh, well, uh, I think probably um, probably as as things goes through. And uh, this mission system goes great, uh, grows more. We will probably have an episode dedicated to it, right? That's the the, the idea. Is that true? Yeah, right. Well, uh, um, there exactly. There are some been some news, but um, 
the, the the enhancements were minor in terms of user interface it's, it's better uh, but there will be other new things uh, to be announced uh, later and uh, we we'll probably get back on the one we announce that and uh, talk more a bit about that because um, uh, it is always interesting specifically for those that contribute to the site and uh, the only thing that I, would, I will say for now is that uh, the uh, this system despite it was only uh, released uh, late uh, November it already uh, encouraged many many developers to 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 increase their participation and uh, just uh, so you see an, 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 an example of something that that um, that was impl that uh, shows how many developers have been uh, embracing this system uh, levels of mission let me just uh, share the screen here and there is on the status page uh, that shows Oh, sorry. I need to log in here very quickly, but very basically, uh, uh, the the status page shows you um, something that um, uh, sh uh, demonstrates how many users have been have been uh, joining those missions. Uh, let me just open here very quickly and. Uh, uh, as you may see there, uh, the, this, this page has lots of uh, fine animation. There are some enhancements, like uh, as you may have seen there, there uh, uh, every time he, the site needs to point the user to do something, he will um, uh, be pointed uh, with a, a circle around the that's very cool. The, the the mission, but what I wanted to show here is not exact. This this is actually new. It's something that shows you, for instance, uh, the the missions that have been uh, that you have completed. Uh, you can actually see the the briefing of the mission even if you already completed here. And the, the one new thing is that it shows how many users have completed that mission already. In this case, it is the very first mission. 270 users have completed this mission. This is a lot of people to embrace this system and uh, it's growing uh, every day, every day there are new new uh, authors uh, engaging on these missions and this is uh, quite interesting uh, and this ties exactly with uh, the next topic uh, that we are going to talk about in this month which is the um, uh, the latest contributions uh, uh, sent to the to the site uh, starting from the JS classes that we always try to mention um, uh, just to encourage uh, developers also to contribute there. So this month, as you may have seen, it's like, uh, if you're not mistaken, it's like 14 new classes uh, uh, submitted in the, this month. And right. uh, this is already is a consequence of the of this uh, system of levels and missions. People seem to have liked a lot. Uh, of this new system and they are encouraged to contribute more and more good classes so the, the original purpose of encouraging um, developers in more classes um, uh, more not just in quantity but also in quality uh, I can see it is working well and uh, specifically on about the JS classes um, uh, there was this goal to reach 200 published classes so we could start the innovation award that we have on PHP classes site also started in JS classes site and that goal was reached precisely now thanks to many many contributions that start to be sent, sent right after this uh, this uh, announcement of the systems the levels and missions so this is great to see this is working very well and it works as an encouragement at least for me to continue to improve uh, uh, on these initiatives and uh, what I can tell you about 2013 is that I have very exciting news developments that uh, I'm planning to Im implement. I'm not going to comment about them right now but I can tell you that uh, it's certainly something along these lines of motivating more 
people to submit yeah, yeah. more uh, uh, classes th with all these encouragements uh, to make it more fun and engaging. Right, and even let's put it this way: let's let let's see in the uh, what I see in the future as a uh, sort of a lack of creativity. Uh, but uh, not a lack of creativity, but uh, the opposite of it. Uh, to see uh, developers providing uh, games, uh, trying to beat the knowledge of developers, and uh, to measure them, and to see right. people trying to uh, assess tests uh, involving PHP, as well as uh, uh, mobile applications, going through your, your right, system right. and trying to increase the the social aspect of the developer as a uh, right. as the badges that's, that's, and etc. Uh, right, that is a widely disseminated pattern of development sites and also mobile applications to make uh, sites more fun to engage and contribute and. Uh, and the one thing that, that I can tell is that uh, one of the things that I want to implement is it will uh, motivate uh, uh, not only authors of classes but also other uh, uh, users that are, are not authors but they can also participate in the site uh, helping uh, other users uh, to uh, execute uh, tasks that they want to execute in the site, being uh, searching uh, for um, great components or, or or other things that, in the end, make the site more useful uh, uh, and uh, fun to participate. After all, and uh, well, uh, as I was. I think uh, this ties to the next uh, topic of this podcast. We are reaching the end, but we have time to mention a couple of, uh, uh, of uh, first uh, classes of JavaScript published on the JS classes site. Uh, Ernani, which ones do you think would be more interesting to comment on, in your opinion, this month? Oh, yeah. I already have it on my screen, the two picks from my month. And uh, can you on the use JS, the font? Yes, on the JS classes site, I I've chosen uh, I've chosen the loader uh, JS uh, JavaScript uh, file or library from uh, Lucio dos Anjos. He's from Brazil, and uh, I like I like the script because uh, we've seen more and more asynchronously loading. Lo uh, requirements to load files, and uh, depending on the situation where you have a mobile application, uh, a mobile HTML website, and or uh, with the bootstrap uh, situation, we've seen uh, websites being developed for for specific devices, and sometimes you if you have to load it to everything to all together. You start to clutter your uh, web browser memory, and uh, the idea here is to optimize uh, the amount of I/O that uh, your website requires on every single request. Right. Also, and to reduce the time to load the pages, which is very important to keep the the sites usable. So I think it was a great contribution from. Uh, 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 Rafael to that just sent um, this uh, component for um, loading uh, uh, um, uh, uh, any other uh, external uh, JavaScript component dynamically. So other than that, what uh, would be the other components that you'd like to talk about? Right. The second one, I try to to vary my, my picks. One is uh, the useful. Thing and the other one is the fun and the nice uh, innovative situation. This is a Node.js module. Module Node has been uh, very very uh, powerful, and uh, the applications that Node uh, brings is uh, amazing. And to see that happening, we see a cross sorry a crosswords board on a console terminal. So you can create crosswords board you know, with the, from a list of words, putting them into uh, different locations and try to put a map, uh, sort of a game. And uh, this has a sort of a 
academic uh, thing because people can then understand how crosswords can be done uh, in programming as well as uh, a game. It's a complete game, so you can see from screenshots here the how it looks, and uh, you can evolve it if you want. Uh, you can bring it uh, to different user interfaces, and it's very cool to see those those things uh, coming yeah. through. So that one was uh, from Igor Escobar, also from Brazil. Yeah, I was about to, to mention the author name, but since it's so cool, I was focusing as well on, uh, on the, the actual code. Yeah, but uh, as you already stated, it's from Igor Escobar, from also Brazil. Congratulations, that's very cool. Yes, uh, th that was great. And uh, on my part, also to mention a couple of um, JavaScript classes very quickly. Well, um, I'm not sure if this is large enough for people to see. Let me try to increase a bit. Well, this is basically um, uh, a jQuery plugin. Well, everything now is a jQuery, but in in, in practice, it do not really require jQuery. What they what uh, uh, it means is that um, people also use to jQuery that now they do it everything with jQuery, and. Um, uh, this one by Ixan of, uh, from Indonesia, what it developed is a, a, an interesting plugin that does something that is not very trivial. What it does is, uh, is um, let me, I was wondering if you had uh, an example maybe off site. No, well, uh, it, it doesn't provide an example, but uh, let me describe you very briefly. What it does is, uh, uh, um, for instance, if you have a form with several fields on which uh, some of the fields are calculated based on the other fields, for instance, if you have several fields and one is the total, you can assign a formula to that total field and uh, the, this plugin automatically calculates the, the, the the formula, the, the result, the value to show in that uh, field that is calculated. And uh, this is not very trivial what is done because it developed a parser that uh, looks at a formula and uh, evaluates the formula at the runtime. And they use JSON, which is the equivalent uh, for JavaScript of uh, the Bison parser uh, uh, grammar uh, parser generator. And uh, it generate part of the code of this component with the JSON, and uh, it's it's interesting to see that uh, uh, this site, uh, this kind of um, components that require uh, uh, greater material from the, the developer uh, are being submitted to the JS classes site, and um, uh, certainly will make uh, the site better for everybody. And the other component that I would like to mention is one that is also more related with fun than with uh, the, the the utility of the component which is the um, that game the, the 15 uh, puzzle game which is made of um, of uh, 15 pieces uh, on a 4 by 4 square and you have a vacant space on which you, uh, you need uh, uh, to move the pieces. So, uh, so you can see how it will work. As you may see here, is the, the game will end when uh, the pieces are by order. Well, this is just That's to give you an cool. idea what what, what the, this this component does. So. It is more useful for people to learn how to do to do it, uh, uh, not just rendering the the pieces, and also to elaborate a, a game based on a 
some JavaScript that you can present on a web page. So and I don't think and I I don't think I've seen uh, somebody from Armenia contributing to the site before. Well, there are not many contributors from Armenia, but Mark Rolich, uh, which is the contributor of this component, has been submitting the, quite a good bunch of uh, interesting classes, and I hope he continues to do so. Uh, because uh, usually his classes are not uh, very trivial to do something that is very interesting and always useful for people to learn from. So with this we move on to one, our final section on which we comment on the uh, Innovation Award uh, uh, winners of uh, <coughs> October. They were nominated in October, they, they were voted in November, and then in December the results came out. Uh, so, uh, moving on right away to the... Uh, from these uh, 10 nominations, which would you like to highlight, Hernani? Right. My picks for the PhD's website goes through. Uh, Artur Granizewski is from Poland. His component uh, is named BEST, and it basically analyzes the version of uh, your Apache, your PHP, and other. I don't think there is other other things, but uh, it uh, provides you a list of vulnerabilities if there are there are any. And uh, I don't know if it suggests you to upgrade it, but. At you can be aware of, of the vulnerabilities found. Right. Well, the idea it. is just that is to, to tell you if you should be concerned about the vulnerability that you have on your PHP or Apache version that you are running. So that's what it does. It first detects uh, the, if you are running PHP on Apache and then it tells you what are the known vulnerabilities. And uh, over time, uh, he, he, uh, I'm sure uh, uh, he is going to to uh, update the class to tell uh, developers about uh, the vulnerabilities of newer versions. So, other than that, which other class would you like to mention? Sorry, my my mute button here was. <laughs> I thought there was something odd here. Uh -huh. Yeah, the second uh, pick for the PHP classes website goes to uh, Gianluca Zanferrari. He's from Netherlands, so I guess uh, he has some uh, Italian uh, relative. But uh, it's nice to see this component because it's very useful, and I can see lots of applicabilities. Basically, you can capture a uh, person's signature through JavaScript, uh, he provides that library. But uh, the thing is the usage of uh, PDF functions here, which right. can uh, then uh, attach the image to a PDF using the components. Uh, I think it's, I've seen here, FPGI package. Right. It parses no, a template it does, it from a PDF document. And then he inserts the image and generates the final document with the inserted signature. Yes. Well, it uh, it actually it uh, it uh, has two parts. One that uh, it works on the browser side to capture the the handwritten signature on the screen, so it assumes that it will be like something like a touch screen. And uh, but the, the PHP part that is what made this class be nominated is, is to merge uh, the signature in an existing uh, uh, PDF document, and that's very useful. And uh, on my part, I also would like to comment on a couple of classes. If let me screen and share again, one of the, uh, those uh, classes is uh, by uh, Mikhail from the United States. <coughs> Well, basically, it, it uh, does something interesting, uh, although probably it's something not everybody will fi find useful, but it takes a math formula expressed uh, as a string and it renders it as a uh, SVG uh, chart and uh, it makes uh, rendering the, the, 
the 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 the, the, the formula uh, uh, gives it uh, uh, a visual uh, presentation of how the formula would be rendered on a on a, on a chart. So this is uh, interesting, uh, uh, despite it. Uh, it's not exactly something that will be useful for everybody but I'm sure many people will find it useful. Uh, the other class that I will also like to mention uh, from Luis Martinez Ulloa from Peru which is basically something, uh, it's actually a very simple functionality but I think it's very useful and uh, innovative because I did not find any other class that was published on the site for this purpose which is to uh, uh, to be able to generate a PDF uh, uh, documents using the FPDF class, so it is extended it to make uh, make the documents automatically uh, print, be sent to the printer when they open. So I think it uh, inserts some JavaScript in the the, the, the PDF documents. So, if you want to send a document and want somebody to print it right away when he receives it, uh, this class is, is very useful. And uh, so, kudos to Luis for his contribution. And uh, with this, we practically ended uh, our podcast. We have discussed lots of topics and... Uh, uh, and uh, I know that uh, there are other topics to that we'd like to cover, but then the, the podcast would, would uh, became larger than would be reasonable. So I think uh, with this we, we end our podcast. And uh, on my behalf, uh, that is all for now. Hope to see you back in the rest of 2013. So bye. Bye-bye, guys. Thanks a lot.